Hi guys, welcome to Meeple's People Circus. Um, today we're going to be playing uh, Papua by Cosmos and Devere Games. Um, I'm here with my lovely wife, and we are, um, and she is actually going to explain the rules because she knows how to play this more than me. So I will pass you straight over to my lovely wife. Okay. Well, you have Papua is basically a worker placement game. Um, the idea is that you are an expedition team going out to Indonesia and exploring the island of Papua, exploring the wildlife, the vegetation and interacting with the local tribes people. And the more you do this, the more prestige you bring back with you and the more the scientific community will love you when you get home and this will obviously create the winner. Um, so to do this, is a combination of worker placement and dice rolls. Um, so over this side we have what we call the prestige track. It's effectively the scoreboard. And running along the outsides we have the energy track. Obviously anything that you're going to do in Papua is going to involve manpower. It's going to involve um, cost to you in some way. Um, so every time that you send explorers out to an area they are going to spend that energy. Okay. Um, so we have six areas that we can send our explorers to. We have the huts area. The huts area actually allows you to increase the number of dice you roll. It gets you an extra explorer into your pool um, and it also allows you to lock a dice, but we'll show you that once we get to that a little bit more. Um, you have the what they call the logistics zone. So this effectively will give you benefits um, listed on these logistics counters here. You can gain extra coins. Now coins in this game allow you to do a few different things. They allow you to re-roll a dice roll, um, but whatever the result is, is final. Um, it also allows you to spend a coin um, to increase or decrease the pips on that dice by one for each coin that you want to spend. Fish also allow you to um, save your explorers because each of these little dice comes with a catastrophe symbol like that. Um, so when you roll one of these in your dice roll you deal with this first it basically means that your explorer has either come, succumbed to disease or had a terrible accident. So you can spend those coins to purchase a doctor effectively and save that worker or else they're going to leave your dice pool and you have less explorers to use and place out on the board. Um, another zone we have on here is uh, an area for hunting and fishing. Fish are ways of replenishing your energy. Um, they so if you have spent a certain amount of energy putting out your workers throughout the board, you can spend fish to reduce that energy cost to yourself. Um, you also have going around the energy track around here. You have little thresholds where you have a certain amount of fish you have to pay. Um, to feed your workforce effectively. Um, um, if you don't spend enough fish for each of the dice, uh, for each of the thresholds that they say, you'll then lose workers to that equivalent. So obviously, fish can be very important here. Um, we also have over here what we call the field notebook area. So we're going to start putting out cards into this area, which allow for benefits for the next round mostly. Do we need there to put are, one out now? Or? We could put one out now just to just so we can show. give an idea. Yeah. Um, so it just basically either gives whoever gains that card at the end of the round some additional effects that affect the other players during the game. Um, some of them actually do apply it all immediately but they will stay on that card. Um, you will also get points at the end of the game for the number of these field notebook cards that you actually have at the end of the game. Um, so the last one that we need to look at is the expedition zone. 
Um, so each of the three locations in the exposition zone, we have the jungle, the river and the mountains. And at the start of the game, or the start of each round rather, we assign a card to each of the three areas. Okay, so these are a combination of plants, animals and local tribes people, of which we actually have one. Um, and this is how we're going to increase our prestige at the end of the game. The end of the game you score points for sets of the same type of card. You also score points for the largest of your varied set of cards. Yeah. Um, <coughs> so, yeah, so there's actually a betting mechanic in the way that you actually collect these cards, but we'll go through that when we actually yeah. see it. Yeah, when we play. Um, these tribes people cards you can collect. Um, you can also discard these at the start of the round to get any of the bonuses that are listed down this side of the card. So five prestige points, five coins, five fish, two extra explorers or ten dice to be rolled on the next round. So yeah. there you are. Um, so the way we would assign our workers is we would start off by rolling dice. Now everybody's going to roll five dice to begin with, um, unless we start working along here and uh, getting extra dice. Um, so, for example, if that would be my die roll, obviously I would have a catastrophe and I'd have to deal with that. Um, let's say that I spent that coin and I saved my explorer, I'm then left with this as my dice roll. So I can then, assuming I'm the first player, I can decide which of my dice belong to which areas. Now, because I would be the first player, it would be you that would be able to place this token here with the cross on it. Yep. So this is what we call the forbidden zone marker. So the person who is behind on the energy track normally is the one that picks which zone that marker sits on and that's what we call the forbidden zone. We cannot play that during this round. Um, slightly different in the two player game. In a two player game one person goes first, the other one places the marker and that switches turned by turn. Um, normally in a three or a four player game that would be the person with the least energy doing that so they are at less of a disadvantage. Um, so yeah, so then I would be able to place my dice. Um, so I'd be able to place two markers, or two workers sorry, um, to anything that I decide to assign a two to that area. So I could, for example, put two workers into the field notebook area. Um, I can then put one dice in the hut rolls and... But then, while you're doing that, you're adding these. Yes, sorry, yes. That's right. So, for example, my two twos I have placed here. I have used a five, for example, for a hut row, and I might decide not to use my dice. And the reason for that is this. I have put out three workers onto the board, so that's going to cost me three energy on the energy track. And I obviously want to reserve that energy as much as humanly possible. Um, so then I could add that down to three. Then it would be your turn to do whichever moves it is that you would want to do. And I would roll my five dice. It would help if I put these out as well. This one. Okay. And that is my dice rolling down. <laughs> it's alright, this is going to be a sort of explanation anyway. Yes, I'm glad this isn't the real game. Woo! So, I have to spend straight away, is it three fish or three coins? No, you start with seven explorers, three coins and three fish. So you yep. could spend your three coins straight away to save your explorers, 
or you can do a combination of explorers and coins, but not obviously fish. Fish is for energy. Wow. Yeah. That has just scuppered my whole plan. Yay. Um, well, I wouldn't even know what to do right now. I'd probably have to do that. I would put them back and do that. Okay, so having spent then, those, why would you like to pick your two threes? My really amazing dice roll. <laughs> so that would go there. Okay. With two meatballs. Mm -hmm. And there we go. Okay. So that would spend, I would spend two. Yeah. So what I should have said is that before we take our turns, in a two player game there's a slight difference to that. So for a two player game we actually have to roll a dice for the logistics, the expedition and the field notebook area. Depending on the dice roll that will depend on how many of their explorers are placed in there. The area. random red player on the side. Yes, yeah, so we have a random red player, the dummy third player. So and should we just yeah. roll quickly? So let's roll for the logistics. Oops into the box may help. So they would get nothing placed in the logistics area. So for expedition they would get one explorer in the expedition area. And for the field notebook they would get two explorers two. in the field notebook area. How come two? And so on a catastrophe dice that effectively counts as zero. Yep. Um, in any of the dice rolls other than your initial work placement, it counts as zero. Yeah. One and a two, you get one explorer. Yeah. Three and a four, you get two explorers. Five, you would place three explorers okay. in a two player game. Okay, that's okay. fine. Yeah. Right, so, um, then now that all the player turns are finished, we then go into what's called resolution phase. And we would deal with these in order of zones by pips. Um, zone one we haven't assigned because no one has used any up here. Okay. Um, zone two, both of you have two explorers in that area. Um, you and said dummy player. <laughs> yes. Myself and dummy player. So, yeah. we have two in the two area, yep. two reds, two yellows. In the case of a tie and the field notebook area, nobody would receive that card. Yep. So, I would return this to here, take my explorers back, and the red explorers would go back to the dummy pool. Yep. So, three. Now, with the expedition cards, there comes into it a betting system. Okay, so on the bottom of everybody has a privacy screen, and on the bottom we have replicas of the jungle, the river, and the volcano. And each player is going to, in secret, spend coins and explorers to the number of locations as the number of explorers they have in the expedition zone. So currently, your blue. You can assign coins and explorers to two zones. Yeah. With one coin. So I can achieve um, one location no matter what. If I was playing in here as well, or an, any active, other active player, they could also bet in that way. So you can go ahead. So obviously I'm going to win this bet because the dummy player doesn't bet. Well, the way it works in a two-player game, it would work out in terms of energy in an expedition area. So currently it is working between the two players. So how's the best way to describe this? Um, in a two player game, obviously the dummy player cannot bet for itself. Um, each player, each field notebook card rather, has a symbol on the top of these corners. So it's a positive, an equals, or a negative. A positive means it has more energy than the active player. Equals means that the dummy player's energy is between 
the highest and lowest energy player. Yeah. Um, and the lowest would mean that it um, would have less energy, so it would lose tyres for that one. So, in this case we have an equals, it would be between the two energies, so it's that technically actually lower energy than you, so you would win whichever card that you decide to bet on. Okay. Like one single card with two meeples that I would have bet two Indeed. on. Indeed. Yeah. In a three or four player game, it boils down to the number of explorers, then the number of coins, and then if there's still a tie, the amount of energy. But because we're in a two player game, we have that added little mechanic. Just throwing it out there, just to be annoying. Yep. What happens if the tie, it ties, it ties, and then on the energy, you tie in again? Does it go down to the first player? The low, or is there a first player in this game? Or usually in a three-player player game, or if it was me versus you, then yes, it would go down to whoever the net, the first the player, player would be. Was. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it would go around in order. So if it wasn't the first player that was in tied, it was the two last. Second to last and last people, it would be the second to last person that won it. Yeah, I mean, whoever's higher in there. There are points in the game where we're both going to be on the same space. Yeah. And one person's energy marker will be on top of the others. Yeah. So the person who's actually behind will be the person underneath. The okay. person on so, top. Yeah, so okay. the person on top will be the first yeah, to move. Okay. So you haven't got that awkwardness yeah. of having to move the one on top, put it back. And yeah, okay, move it that's along. fine. That's fine. Okay. Um, I think that's everything. Yeah, okay. Okay, so the game will end once um, either we run out of the exploration cards or one of us reaches uh, zero as energy. And then, in which case, the current round will yeah. reach its conclusion and then we will score. So, can I ask why is there minus five if okay. it ends on a zero? So, say for example you were first player, yep. and you got down to zero energy, I could then spend le more energy than that. There is a, um, you will earn points at the end of the game for the amount of energy that you have left. Okay. So effectively I could sacrifice points in order to try and finish other points that might get me further ahead. Yeah, um, okay. But that's why there is that negative points there you are losing points to try and get yourself ahead. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. That's fine. Um, the, uh, so once we had all cleared that up and all the workers had returned back to us, yeah. then we remove any leftover cards here. We replace these. We replace this with a new card. Even if it's not been used. Even if it's not been used. Okay. Okay. Um, so if so this 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 number two card comes into play when it reaches twenty five point or someone yep. gets down to twenty five. When someone points. reaches twenty five, we will start drawing two cards. Basically, yep. the danger level has increased. We've been there longer, and we're starting to get deeper into the exploration area yep. by now. So yeah, the the oh, the theming of the game starts becoming more intense, yep. more aggressive. Okay. And then these points around the board. Is um, they're basically you're paying to go past it, so you're paying two fish, three yeah. fish, four fish, five fish as a sort yeah. of penalty for losing that many points or paying for your workers. Yeah, so, so yeah, if for example you got down to say this level here and you decided, oh, I'm going to spend fish, you would go back over here. Going back past that marker would not cost you the additional fish. But going past it again? Going past it again would not. So you, it's only a one-time yeah. payment? It's only yeah. once that you have to pay that. And you cannot go past the energy that you started with in a turn. So okay, so you, if you say, so if you start on 24, go down 2 and then try and bump yourself up by 3. Yeah, you, you can't do that. You can't, you, you only can do, do that. Okay, that's yeah. fine. Um, with these cards here, yep. we are trying to get set collections, so I will zoom into it. Yep, so, so sets are, of different cards. So two, three, four, all the way up plus, to, all the way there up are to seven different seven, types of cards. Or yeah. two or, of the kind, three of the kind, four of the kind, five of the kind. Yeah. Yep. 
Um, you also have in sorry in this area sorry, the I'll number of field notebook cards that you collect. Yep. And some additional and then, bonuses at the end, so for your explorers, leftover energy for your fish, and the person with the most coins. Yep. Yeah, okay. And um, I think that is. I think we're there. I think that is it. Okay. So, so we'll have a quick rinse. Yes, and we will be back tomorrow. Oh, one more quick thing. Oh no, we one won't be back thing. tomorrow. <laughs> one more quick thing. Um, Yes, actually, I'll explain it to you tomorrow. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, we'll be back tomorrow. <laughs> Thanks, guys, for watching, and we will see you tomorrow. Bye. Thanks. Bye.